Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video is about credit cards, weapons of financial destruction. Sounds dramatic, but actually they are quite dramatic. Credit cards can be financially devastating when they're not used correctly. And most times I see them definitely not being used correctly. I want you to think about your personal finances as a business, your business. Think of it that you are the CEO of your own business. You need to be the best CEO you can of your own business, your finances. You're responsible for the income, your salary. You're responsible for the outgoings, your expenses. You're also responsible to make sure you have some surplus income left over for emergencies, lifestyle things you want, holidays, tech gadgets, that type of jazz. It's your responsibility to make sure there's some left over so that your business can keep operating, just like a normal business would need to. They need to pay staff, they need to pay wages, expenses, rent, that type of thing. You're the CEO of your business, so leave some spare money for when things pop up. So you don't need to rely on a credit card. You shouldn't need to, ever. A credit card means that you're taking out a loan, essentially. It means that you're taking on debt to buy whatever it is you think is more important at the time, whether it be clothes, dining out, um, paying a bill that perhaps you couldn't afford otherwise, um, holidays, anything like that. Credit cards are there to entice you. They're offered by banks as a financial product. Banks sell products to make money. By you taking on a credit card and not repaying it in full when it's due, you pay money to the bank, the interest, Credit card interest rates can be 10, 15, 20, 24% or more. Ouch. Remember, banks are there to make money, not to help you. I don't care how good your bank is, they're not there for you. Banks make millions. I'm sure you don't. I don't. Banks are not there to help us. Banks are there because they're in the business of selling. They sell credit cards on the basis that they know most people won't pay the credit card back in full on the due date. Most people will just make a minimum repayment or two. Most people will pay interest to the bank for the privilege of having that short-term loan given to you. So remember, banks are there to make money. By you taking up a credit card offer and not repaying in full, you are making a sale to the bank. You're giving them money. The bank is winning. You are not winning. You will not win if you have credit card debt that is outstanding. It will financially cripple you. Today, let's have a quick talk about interest uh, with credit cards and how they work. Just to give you a rundown, for those of you that don't have a credit card already, do not get one. For those of you that do have credit card debt already, repay it as soon as possible. For those of you that have a credit card and are using it successfully, in other words, you put money, you put expenses on it, you repay it in full every single month, fine. More power to you if that's something that works for you. Credit cards can definitely have their place in the world when they're used correctly. So for those people that don't actually know how a credit card works or are new to credit cards or think they know how credit cards work but actually may not fully understand, let me tell you. When you take out a credit card, you're essentially taking out a loan from the bank. A minimum credit card um, loan uh, limit will be, say, about $1,000. It can go right up to two, three, four, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. When you're forgetting your first credit card, it'll probably offer to you by the bank about 1000 bucks worth of uh, credit. That means you can go and take your credit card, go and spend that 1000 bucks, and then have to repay it back to the bank over time. You don't have to repay it straight away. Usually there's no set time limit how long it takes you. The longer the better for the bank. They're going to get paid interest for the privilege of giving you that money, which is, let's be honest, pretty easy to get in today's market. Like I said, interest is, can be up to 24% with credit cards. That interest is calculated daily, usually. There's a bit of a formula to it, but basically for every day that you have that credit card balance outstanding, you're paying money to the bank. Uh, like I mentioned, you don't need to repay a credit card in full, usually. A bank will uh, send you out a statement. Usually there'll be a monthly repayment of, of say, $20 or $30 on there that you have to repay. So you might think to yourself, great, I don't have to pay that 1000 bucks back. I'll just pay the minimum of 30 bucks a month and eventually it'll be paid off and a bit of interest, who cares? Well, the thing is, with those minimum repayments, you're really unlikely to ever repay it anytime soon. Most of the money you're paying to the bank 
the portion of it will go towards paying the interest. It won't actually be paying off your credit card debt. For example, say you have a $1,000 credit card limit. You go and spend on a holiday or something. Uh, say it's got a 24% interest rate. Say you make minimum repayments of $30 a month because that's all your credit card statement told you to do. So you're doing that, thinking you're great, not paying any interest or anything, you're gonna pay off your loan. Uh, not quite. See, interest on a $1,000 credit card over a year, it's gonna be about 240 bucks. You don't get hit with interest straight up. It's something that accrues daily. So it's not quite 240 bucks, being 24%, but for ease of today's discussion, let's assume 24% interest on a $1,000 credit card is 240 bucks a year. By you making repayments for $30 a month, you're gonna repay $360 a year. $360 repayment, take away your $240 uh, interest, uh, that's not leaving much to actually repay the loan, is it? 120 bucks, um, for you to repay $1,000 with only 120 bucks going towards it, it's actually gonna take you close to five years to repay it. Mm. Five years to repay a thousand bucks, it doesn't make sense, does it? So the thing with credit cards, you've got to, and thinking about your personal finances as a business is, if I go and buy an investment property and I take out a loan for that and it costs me four or five percent, maybe six percent loan interest, what I buy with that loan is a property, for example. It makes me money over the long term. It grows in value, it pays me rent, gives me tax deductions, things like that. If you go and take out a loan, being a credit card, to buy stuff, holidays, clothes, dining out, whatever, stuff, that doesn't go up in value. It actually goes down in value. If you go out and buy a new iPhone or something with your credit card, it's not gonna be worth the same tomorrow as it is what you paid for it today, is it? So you, if you take a credit card out at 24% interest, or whatever the rate may be, you just took out a loan for 24% interest to buy something that goes down in value. That is absolutely crazy. Whereas if I take out a loan at five, six, seven percent much lower, to buy a property that goes up in value, that makes more sense, doesn't it? So think about it as a business, all right? You're the CEO of your business. It's up to you to take out correct loans for your business, not useless loans. Credit card debt is useless. It will financially destroy you. Now you might think a $1,000 credit limit, that's not gonna destroy me, Ash, that's not gonna do much. Well, think about this. Um, I saw a client the other day, a young couple, 27, 24. Between them, they earn about 120 grand, 130 grand, I think he earned 60, and then the other partner earned another 60 odd. Between them, they had almost $59,000 worth of personal debt, being credit cards, and I think they had a car loan as well. So of the $59,000 they had owing at ages 24, 27, of that, $30,000 was a car loan. It's pretty big anyway. So the other 29,000 was credit card debt. Between the two of them, that's on average close to $15,000 worth of credit card debt each. Now for that privilege of having $59,000 worth of crap debt to their name at the age of 24, 27, they were paying close to $475 a week in repayments to try and get rid of that debt. Now they were making mostly minimum repayments too. They weren't paying extra to get rid of the loan balances quickly. So on top of their $475 a week paying debt repayments, they also had their own rent. For example, three, four hundred dollars a week they were paying. They came to see the financial planner I was working with because they want to buy a house in a year's time. They want to get married, they want to buy their house. They were wondering how they should save their home loan deposit. How can they afford to do that if they're already paying 475 bucks back to different banks and lending institutions for credit cards for stuff they don't even have anymore? Dinners, nights out, holidays plus pay their own rent, three, four hundred dollars a week, plus put money away to be able to accrue a 30,000 or more home loan deposit in a year and a half's time. That's gonna be tough. Now those two guys, they didn't wake up with $59,000 worth of credit card debt to start with. Mm -mm. They accrued that over a few years. So it started with a $1,000 credit card limit that one of them took out. 
went and bought something, I don't know, let's say a TV or whatnot, thought he'd just get the $1,000 credit card and then repay that one, easy peasy. Problem was then a year or so later, he wanted something else. Let's just assume it was a holiday or some shopping or, you know, your friend invites you to an overseas holiday and you want to join in quickly. You haven't got the cash. So he went out and got another credit card because, you know, the first one was already maxed out. They're earning not bad income between them, so he got it. He was eligible. He got the credit card. So then he was paying off two credit cards. Then they got the car loan. Then a year later, they took out a personal loan of $5,000 for whatever, whatever he wanted at the time. So only after about four or five years, they'd accumulated $59,000 worth of credit card and car loan debt between them. So don't think it can't happen to you just because you start off small. See, the problem is if you don't repay off one loan and then you get into the habit of wanting something straight away and get another credit card or loan, you start to accumulate your personal debts because it's very hard to pay off one quickly in a year by the time some other desire rolls around the next year. So the moral of the story is credit card debt, whilst it may seem a bit of short-term fun, really steer clear of it. I can't tell you how many times I see financial plans coming across my desk now with people that have two, three, four, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars $10,000, $15,000 worth of credit card debt. There's no reason to have that. It doesn't make financial sense. It won't help you. It will not make you money. It will send you broke because you end up paying money back to pay off those credit cards for things that you may not even own anymore, whether it be an iPhone or some dinners or things that you went out for, things that you felt that you needed to have, instant gratification. You need to be prepared. You need to run your business more effectively, just as a business would keep money aside for future emergencies, expenses, things that pop up. You don't know what's going to happen in life all the time. You need to keep some emergency money on the side. You need to keep also a fund accruing of cash for stuff, stuff that you just want in life because you don't know what you'll want straight away. There could be stuff that pops up in a year's time. But the fact is by taking out a credit card of $1,000 at 24% interest, repaying that, to repay that in a year, you would need to repay $95 a month, not the minimum of 30 after you repay that credit card over one month, paying $95 a, a month, you would have paid $135 interest, for example. So that $1,000 item you bought just cost you $1,135. Think about it differently. Get ahead of the game. If you were to start saving $95 a month, after a year, you would have $1,140. You would have more, $5 more, you would have the cash straight away. In 12 months' time, you would have the cash. You don't need to go and credit, get a credit card. Start saving now. Don't wait until someone invites you on a holiday, for example. You can save up the money a lot quicker than it will take you to repay back debt because you will have interest to repay when you have to repay debt. So get ahead of the game. Be smart with money. Don't financially cripple yourself from the get-go. Remember, if you don't have a credit card now, Stay away from it. You don't need it, really. It's not the, the bee's knees to get you started financially into success. You don't need it. If you have credit card debt, get rid of it ASAP because it's not helping anything. Banks look down upon it. It's not going to help you for your future when you buy a home loan, for example, or if you want to get ahead with your investing. There'll be future videos that will cover how to repay credit card debt. This video is more to introduce you to the financial destruction that credit cards really can be so that maybe you get an understanding on how credit cards actually work and how it's very commonplace these days for people to be taken advantage of by the banks. Remember, they're not there to help you. Credit cards are not there to help you. You don't need them. Hope you have found the value of this video today. I do put copies of all of these videos on the YouTube channel so you can re reference them if you need to afterwards and go through them. Please pass them around to all your friends and family. Um, anyone that needs some help can visit the Money Messenger website or join the Facebook page. And just remember, this is not financial advice. This is just to broaden your financial knowledge about subjects so you can make informed decisions about yourself. So please stay tuned for future uh, videos and we'll see you all soon. Bye.